Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. I am ready to make a lot of people possibly angry with me today. <laughs> we are gonna talk about Q-tips today and more specifically Q-tips for piercing aftercare and things of that nature. And this is like <laughs> one of the most debated things that I see about piercing online right now. I see these arguments in forums. I see it all over TikTok. I've even seen it on Twitter, like people debating whether or not you should use Q-tips to clean your piercings and people are getting heated about it. <sighs> so let's get into it. Q-tips, cotton swabs, obviously the little things that we all use to clean our ears, even though we're not supposed to. Most people have also used them to clean other things. I use them every day to touch up my makeup, but should you use them on your piercings while you're, they're healing? And there's some good arguments on both sides of this. On the anti-Q-tip side, you have a lot of people who are primarily worried about Q-tips leaving fibers behind in the piercing that can cause issues for the healing process. So essentially Q-tips are just kind of loose cotton fibers that are round tightly around a little stick. And when you're using those to clean those piercings, those fibers can sometimes snag on prongs or gem settings or even stubborn crust and get caught and trapped there. And then those fibers stay stuck on the jewelry and the piercing that can lead to some issues during the healing process. The other concern is clients moving and messing with their jewelry too much by using Q-tips to clean. So like just, just, being too rough with it and just banging things around using q-tips and those are very valid concerns and you can cause irritation to your piercing if you end up with a bunch of stuck q-tip fibers around it it's kind of no different than if you ever ended up with your hair really tangled around your jewelry which causes basically the same issue that q-tip fibers can crust and debris can get caught and stuck in it it just sits trapped against the piercing it can even trap moisture it's a bad time that being said, there's also the pro Q-tip side of things. Um, and that is that there are some clients who produce so much crust or secretion during the healing process, or the crust or secretion that they produce is so hard and difficult to clean off that without a Q-tip and some form of manual removal of that debris, they're not gonna be able to get their piercings clean enough. And that is not just down to different clients' body chemistry. Climate plays a really big role in that. Humid climates tend to see more moisture and more secretion on piercings than dry, arid climates. And in humid climates, it's far more common to see a, a larger number of clients who produce a lot more of that secretion and end up needing to use a Q-tip to clean those things. There's also the argument of a lot of piercers suggest using Q-tips wet, so spraying your saline on the Q-tip first and then using that to clean around. And if you're using the Q-tip wet, there's a much lower chance of any fibers or pieces coming off and getting caught on the jewelry. So if Q-tips are used correctly, that can really eliminate a lot of the concerns about fibers getting caught or over cleaning with Q-tips. Now to really look at this debate, it helps to understand the goal of piercing aftercare. When we are talking about taking care of our piercings while they're healing, there's no like magic solution or product that you're gonna put on your piercing that's gonna magically make it heal or heal faster. It's a healing wound like any other scrape or popped pimple or injury that we get on our body and our body has to do the work of healing that. When we are taking care of our piercings, we're really just kind of making that process a little easier for our body. Piercings are a puncture wound, which means they produce a secretion or a debris during the healing process. It's typically uh, honey or white or sometimes like off yellowish or even sometimes for some people off greenish colored secretion that our bodies produce. And when we see it, we often see it dried and hardened on the outside of the piercing and on our jewelry as those little crusties that we all know and not so secretly love to pick off of our jewelry. Don't try and tell me you don't do it. I know you do it. Everyone does it. It's not the best for your piercing, but we all do it. It's like popping pimples. Now that crust and secretion is a waste product of the wound and we don't wanna just let it sit there and build up. That can cause hygiene irritations, essentially something similar to a diaper rash because you're leaving a waste product trapped against the skin. It can also cause moisture irritations because it'll trap moisture from showering and cleaning and sweating up against the skin and that can cause its own set of issues too. So in piercing aftercare, we do want to remove that crust and debris. How we go about removing it is what is so hotly debated. Some folks say, just let the shower water run over your ear. Others say, just spray the saline directly on and let it spray that crust off. Others say to just gently fold a piece of clean gauze, put some saline on it and use that to clean it away. And others suggest the use of Q-tips. 
personally, I am in Camp Q-Tip and I actually have a story from my days as a client and before being a full-time piercer as to why. So I was probably around 17, 18, and I was just starting my ear curation. This was the first time that I was like really getting a lot of ear piercings um, and all this stuff. And I was seeing the fantastic AJ Goldman at 12 Ounce Studios in Deptford, New Jersey. He's wonderful if you're in the Jersey area, go see him, I love him. And as part of my ear curation, we did a rook, we did some cool stacked helixes, and we did a really big conch. Um, and during the healing process of the rook, this is when I was first seeing a lot of like anti-Q-tip stuff on the internet. And before this, I had always used Q-tips to clean my piercings. So I was like, okay, I guess with this new rook piercing, I'll give it a shot just letting the shower water run over it and using some saline and gauze as needed. I came in to see AJ for my one month checkup and he took one look at my rook and he was like, Lynn, have you cleaned this like even once since we pierced it? Like what is, this does not look good. Like what is going on? I said, well, honestly, that's why I came in. I was reading online on the forums and I saw a lot of folks saying that Q-tips were a bad idea. So I've been using folded gauze with saline to try and clean away that crust and debris, but I just, I must be doing something wrong. I can tell it's not working for me. That's honestly part of why I came in. Like, like can you help? And he tried with saline and gauze to clean away that crust and debris and it did not happen. Nothing short of Q-tips. Uh, and really getting in there got that debris off. And we tried for like another month or two for me to use alternative cleaning methods and do things. And I have psoriasis, so I already produce like some scaling and some extra secretion for my piercings when they heal. Essentially, I am the queen of crusty healing piercings. I'm just, I'm a crusty gal, what can I say? But the way that my body produced that natural secretion during the healing process, I needed to use Q-tips to clean that stuff away. Letting the shower water run over it, using folded gauze, just spraying saline was absolutely not cutting it for the type of crust and secretion that my body produced. And that's something that nowadays as a professional, I realize I definitely see that type of secretion more often with folks with skin conditions, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, even things that can affect skin and connective tissue like EDS. I see a lot more of that type of secretion. I also, like I mentioned earlier, see a lot more of that type of secretion in more humid climates. When I worked in Florida, I've seen that so much more often than I have when I've worked in Michigan or Boston. We know it's very well documented that climate can change how our bodies heal and handle wounds. Climate affects our skin health in general. There's literally lists of like the top best and worst cities to live in for your skin problems. And we also know that different people with different skin types affects their wound healing as well. So it makes perfect sense that some percentage of clients are going to have different experiences with crust and secretion during the healing process than others. And some folks are going to produce a lot more of that secretion. And if you're one of those people who produces more of that secretion during the healing process, you are probably going to have to use Q-tips to keep your piercing clean because just letting the shower water run over it or just folding some gauze with some saline is not going to be enough to get that really stubborn, really difficult crust off of your piercing. It's just not going to happen that way. And for clients who need that, telling them that they shouldn't use Q-tips or that Q-tips are bad or spreading this rhetoric that Q-tips are awful for every client is really harmful because then you have clients who need Q-tips to clean their piercings correctly, who aren't using them because they're afraid that they're doing something wrong and they're ending up with these piercings really built up with crust and debris and they're sitting there going, what is wrong with me that I can't clean my piercing the right way, that this stuff won't come off, like I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Personally, my feelings on Q-tips are that if you don't need to use them, if you can just let the shower water run over your piercing or spray some saline or use some gauze and that gets things totally clean, awesome, amazing. Do that then. If you live in a colder climate, if your skin type is one where you just don't produce a lot of that secretion or the stuff that you produce is easy to clean away, fantastic, kudos. But if you are not one of those people, and if your body does produce a lot of really difficult to clean secretion, if you live in humid climates, if you have certain skin conditions or medical conditions that affect these things, use your Q-tips. You are not making a mistake by using them. You are not hurting your piercing by using them. Just use them with a little bit of common sense. 
understand that there are concerns about fibers being left behind by q-tips when they're used so i suggest using them wet spray your saline on the q-tip first and then use that to clean away the crust and debris i find it easiest to clean away that crust and debris after a hot shower so try and time your piercing cleaning with after your shower or bath time that way they're a little bit easier to clean off and pay attention when you're cleaning your piercing if you feel that q-tip snag Take a look in the mirror and check for fibers. If it's hard to see your own piercing in the mirror, take a picture of it on your phone, preferably with the flash on. That way you can really see if you've gotten any fibers left or stuck. But generally, as long as you're careful with your Q-tips while you clean and as long as you're using them wet, I personally don't see clients having a ton of issues with using Q-tips to clean. And I do also think that some of the issues that certain piercers see with Q-tips being used to clean is due to the fact that they don't explain very in depth to their clients how to clean their piercings. And this is no shade to any piercer in particular, but I can't tell you how many clients I've seen who've told me that their piercer just told them to spray some saline on it and clean it or gave them a card the size of a business card with the most vague instructions and just kind of assuming that clients knew how to clean their piercings or knew what they needed to do. Um, and while yes, there are many clients getting piercings who are experienced and understand what to do already, that's not the case for everyone, and some people do need specific instructions. And I will say that since I have started offering more comprehensive aftercare, my very first studio I went to did this tiny little half page, and then all the way up to my very last studio did a big full booklet, I saw far fewer issues with clients not cleaning their piercings correctly or having problems with Q-tips because we took the time to explain in depth how to use the Q-tip safely and what the concerns were and what to watch for. And clients were able to understand that and follow it very well. So when it comes to the Q-tip debate, I'm team Q-tip. I definitely believe that there are so many people out there who need Q-tips to heal their piercing correctly and safely, who wouldn't be able to clean it well without it. And I'm also personally a big believer that with a little bit of extra explanation and a little bit of extra time spent on aftercare with your clients, they are able to be very receptive. They learn, they pay attention, they listen, but they can only do that if you give them those resources. And if you're just telling your clients, put saline on it, clean it with a Q-tip, of course they might end up making some mistakes. You're not really explaining it to them if that's all you say. I hope this helped for some of you and if you'd like to see me do some more stuff about piercing aftercare or you have some aftercare questions, let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, if you like the content that I'm putting out, please hit like and subscribe and I am sure we will hang out again soon. I'm gonna go clean my piercings with a Q-tip and make a lot of people angry. <laughs> have a great rest of your day. I know we'll hang out and chat soon. Bye.